Welcome back to The Fate of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes Weekly D&D 5th Edition Actual Play Campaign, and I am Dungeon Master Monty Martin. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Sebastian Crow, the half-elf shadow sorcerer who is alive. And um, <laughs> we are joined today by our good friends. Jill Donitis, playing Veo Husenya, the tabaxi gloomstalker ranger rogue. And Pluto Jackson, the human... Joe O. Gorman, the Pluto Jackson, human battle master. All still alive. All We're all alive. For now. For now. Thank you for joining us once again. We're the Dungeon Dudes, and Kelly and I create all kinds of D&D content here on YouTube for you to check out. So be sure to subscribe to our channel for player's guides, DM's guides, and much, much more. You can also watch us on Tuesday evenings when we premiere the episodes of the show on YouTube. That happens at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Or you can also check us out as an audio-only podcast as well. We are very proud to announce that Monsters of Drakenheim is launching very soon on Kickstarter. And to celebrate that, following this week's episode, we will be taking a short hiatus from the regular Drakenheim show to go on Paluto Jackson's Monster Hunt, a special series that we will be airing uh, in the lead up to our Kickstarter and through the campaign to showcase some of the new and familiar monsters that will be featured in Paluto Jackson's Monster Slaying Guide. That book with over 150, somewhere 200 monsters, depends on how many stretch goals we hit, because we want to illustrate every single one, uh, will be available to all of our Kickstarter backers when that goes live later this spring. So follow the, the links below because it is coming very, very soon, and get pumped for our brief interlude as uh, Kelly and Jill take the reins of some fun hangers-on to the heroic escapades that Paluto Jackson undertook long before his adventures began in Drakenheim. We will be showcasing some of the deadly and dangerous monsters from the book, uh, and so there might be some questions about continuity, but don't worry about that. Pluto Jackson's telling the story, so you know everything that happens in this one's going to be true. It's all about board. <laughs> so, How did you get Ignatius? <laughs> so get excited for that, because that's coming very, very soon. And once we are through that series, we will be back to our regularly scheduled adventures. With that, let us return to Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible. While simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war, the power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all the fate of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, Veo, Sebastian, and Pluto had made their way through the dungeons of Nox to the lair of Old Man Knight, who revealed himself to be none other than one of the eight Academy Directors. Speaking with Old Man Knight, our heroes attempted to bargain with the Academy Director for their assistance in, in combating the rest of the Directorate, finding old man knight agreeable to the prospect of potentially helping our heroes however uh, and most particularly sebastian asking if old man knight would teach him the wish spell the director was skeptical of this warning sebastian about the consequences for wielding such powerful magic but nevertheless offered to teach the spell and give their aid if our heroes can prove themselves by destroying the what remains of the ancient sorcerer king Solus the first the very first of the sorcerer kings who is said to be entombed deep within the dungeons of nox 
Old Man Knight is prepared to reveal to you the location of Solus's tomb, um, which has a f its fair share of guardians protecting it as well before the actual site of Solus's tomb, but has cautioned you against your typical approach of going in and just hoping for the best. Um, explaining that such strategies may have worked against your previous foes, but against uh, those on the League of Solus and the other re the rest of the Academy Directorate, a firm plan with contingencies for how what will happen when that plan fails will be necessary to have a hope of defeating them. And very room, little room for error will exist in such battles. The Nevertheless, Old Man Knight has offered you protection in their sanctum for the time being, noting that while they can provide you an exit and a return to the streets above in Lumen, once currently you are protected from the directorate, the rest of the directorate and the Silver Order by remaining in the Dungeons of Nox, that should you leave, you may be immediately targeted by both of these forces. Um, with that in mind, Old Man Knight is offering his assistance and tutelage in helping you prepare or seeking out other resources in Nox so that you can be prepared to take on Solus and hopefully the rest of the Directorate eventually. Old Man Knight furnishes you um, with a place to stay by conjuring a magnificent mansion spell. Oh, nice. um, and uh, thus, thus you were able to enter into um, the uh, one of the magnificent mansions, which uh, you are able to tailor. Um, ba basically, the magnificent mansion spell conjures up um, a incredible manner w filled with all sorts of accoutrements and and furnishings um, that you are able to design to be your perfect and most comfortable abode uh, for the purposes of taking a long rest. And Old Man Knight states that should you require, uh, should you require more time here, they can shel that they're happy to shelter you for as long as you need, reminding you that time is of the essence regardless, right? But that you can return to Old Man Knight's lair uh, they gave you a stone that you can use to return here if you do need to rest and recuperate. And that mm -hmm. Old Man Knight's workshops and libraries are open to you with discretion and, and, and tutelage should, should you need to create any equipment, research any spells, or retrain in any way. I should note that as uh, um, you may take your first long rest now, and also reach level 17. Hey! Woo, 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 woo. That's huge. Good. Uh, and we get our uh, points back? Uh, yes. Uh, th because you have made it uh, this far, um, while you are resting here in, within a magnificent mansion, the cursed effects of the Dungeon of Nox do not apply, so you have the normal effects of a long rest as long as you do so within the Magnificent Mansion spell conjured by uh, by Old Man Knight. And you're going to allow me to learn um, a spell not usually on the Sorcerer spell list? Yes. If you wish to train with Old Man Knight, I will allow you to retrain into spells on the Wizard spell list while you are here. So if you want to learn spells that are normally available to wizards that aren't normally on the sorcerer spell list, you can retrain those out here. Including if you want to learn anti-magic field and or global invulnerability. I, well, I get an 8th level spell uh, at level 17, so I'm going to take anti-magic field. I think it'll come in handy against the other directorate. Having to fight the directors, I think it's going to be, yeah. 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 Agreed. And um, kind of a continuation, is Old Man Knight going to empower our rings of spell storing to level eight? Yes. Yeah. So you're all three of your, um, as an academy director, 
Old Man Knight grants you, Sebastian, your eight rings. Whoa. Thank you. He has the authority to do so. I've been waiting. And so he pre presents you with, with the rings, each crafted of a different material. It says, appropriate, you'll need them. Um, you know, the Academy was kind of slacking on this. They haven't given me a ring since I think five. Well, then allow Zalvaka the Ancient, director of the Amethyst Academy, to personally correct the tardiness of our organization. Thank you, this means a lot to me. You show in demonstrating this that you are worthy of ascending the rank of Grand Master. Thank you. I, uh, I feel honored to represent the Academy. Uh, it was always the purpose of the Academy, as I saw it, to protect and train Mageborn. I agree. For myself, and the thing that has kept me going through all these cycles, is that for me, I feel that every Mageborn is in some way my own grandchildren. Because truth be told, they literally are. From, it, it, it was from that first pact, though not my direct descendants, it was from our original packs and those first packs that we forged that I helped others forge. Not that to burst we brought bubble, sorcery. I'm half elf, so there was it might not be directly related. Just let him. Fair enough. <laughs> let him have this. He's teaching you all this stuff. At least you have to correct it. At least within our world. I don't want him thinking that like you know we have some family ties or maybe maybe it's benefit. You know what? Yeah. yeah. Granddad, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> As I said, a wish. not <laughs> old man. I says I never did have children of my own, so I view all mageborn perhaps as my adopted children. For I was there when those first packs were made, and humanity's fate was ever altered. I understand that for the elves it was a different process. My understanding, at least from what little that I know, magic entered into the realm of the elves, though through similar means. At least that is the best conjecture, given how little they know of where they came from. Nevertheless, you will need to make adequate preparations if you are to take on Solus. I can guide you if you wish to seek out any treasures, or if you wish to consult my libraries. I can offer you what instruction and tutelage I can, if you wish to learn any spells that normally would not be available to you. In the case of your allies as well, I do have some reading material within my own library that might be useful for the two of you. Anything that will help would be much appreciated. And honestly, outside of the library, since this is your domain of sorts, if there's any other areas you can point us towards that might be worth reaching to. He places in front of you, Veo, a, um, a small, thin tome. And in front of you, Pluto, a hefty book. Oh, see, I'm... Oh. <laughs> um, as you open your book, though, Veo, you realize that the letters are extremely small, oh. whereas the book that Pluto has is mostly pictures. <laughs> oh, yeah. Picture again. <laughs> Love it. Oh, look at that one. And it has pop-up. Listen, I... Have... Yeah. <laughs> pop-up. Oh. Uh, these are a manual of gainful exercise and a manual of quickness in action. Full exercise. Ooh. My strength score can increase? Yes. I you will need to read, 
I know there's a lot of pictures, but you will need to read the actual words too. Just I never thought reading would make me would be the the way I got to a higher level of strength. <laughs> but here we are. That shows what I know. That one you continue says to surprise me. Uh, it's incredible. It's incredible. I'm going to be studying the spells in here, uh, wizard spells, and if you guys want to read your books. Like, because I figure I also want to, I have a plan. Because what we've learned from the golem is that even in the presence of anti-magic, we need something to overcome our resistance, right? Mm -hmm. I've been supplied with a wonderful set of armor by... Mr. Crow, I think uh, it has, <laughs> it's already started to be disassembled. I want to spend some time. Uh, I do have, I do have Mason's tools, but maybe I could get some help from the servants of the Magnificent Mansion and we can forge down the armor and make some uh, adamantium tipped arrows sword I think I really want a shiv I think I've, I've I've expressed some interest in having like a small knife dagger a dagger we want to find you some replacement armor first though yeah yeah we don't want to start ripping apart your armor <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... <laughs> you're just like I'm ready I'm already melting it it's already in the oven I do possess facilities that we could dismantle and reforge your armor and I have my own resources here that if you do wish to have a, sele a selection of adamantium tipped arrows and another weapon or two forged from the armor, that would be possible. Yeah, I think we could put together uh, a kit to be ready to attack the Sorcerer King and any of his constructs or uh, minions that might also have some kind of magical resistance that we would have to overcome in the presence of an anti-magic field. That's a great idea. Weird little request. While you're forging all of these weapons and things, if you have any like bits and pieces left over, I can take those. Okay. Um, yeah, I well. know that like magic, hurling magic is going to be an issue, but if there's an opening, do you think it's beneficial? I guess magic is magic, but like ball bearings too well i was gonna say like animate objects on a bunch of yeah adamantium. would that work would that work it's like bullets but like I... adamantium bullets but would they would they cease to move or the momentum still carry as soon as it hit the 10 feet i'm not sure you know what actually might work though you have some proficiency with like i don't know slingshot yeah i was gonna say like what's like what's like your <laughs> If you couldn't cast a cantrip, what would you throw? I used my dagger once. <laughs> I did. I did four damage. I need you a dagger. I need you a dagger. We just don't want to get you that close. We could put like a little hook on the end of my staff of power to like <laughs> stab. Well, kind of mm. <laughs> yeah, could be possible. We should get you one of those shoe knives. Where the knife goes sink and comes out of the shoe, and so you can kick them. <laughs> okay, I've learned a lot about kicking in the last couple. It's one of the best hours. <laughs> Most swift kick. <laughs> yeah. These are all. These are all like. There are no bad this ideas. This is all plan like. No bad ideas in brainstorming. Plan seventeen. <laughs> plan seventeen. Mm -hmm. When all else fails. Yes. If Sebastian it comes down to it, I can <laughs> kick the sorcerer kick. <laughs> if if all other plans have failed us. If your armor is melted down. Yeah. It could be forged into. At least one. Longsword, yeah. Um, three daggers, um, and several pieces of ammunition. If you want small objects that are made of anima adamantium that you could animate, they could be made into bolts or darts. I like darts. Darts could be cool. Um, and so, um, you can. Melting down the armor is enough to furnish tw uh, uh, up a uh, total of 50 pieces of ammunition in any combination of arrows or darts. Okay. Arrows, darts, or bolts. And I would rule that you could use darts or as a as a target for the 
animate objects well, then yes, you, each of you could have an adamantium dagger. As like a backup, mm -hmm. as like a fail state. So if you have nothing else, just like. Yeah, we definitely need arrows though. Yeah, I think you should have like 30 arrows. Like a safe number tipped, of arrows. Because that would be. And then. Uh, yes, they would be adamantium tipped arrows. So And then about <laughs> 20 darts that um, mm -hmm. Sebastian could have. That's like two volleys, right? Yeah. And yeah. a and a adamantium tipped longsword. The adamantium arrows, um, because of their nature, they are unbreakable except in an anti magic field. Then they could probably break. yes. So if the adamantium arrows are shot at something that is not in an anti magic field, they don't break, and thus they can be reused. Oh. But if they are shot at something that is in an anti magic field. They will break. If and, that guy takes thirty arrows, then I think we were doomed to fail, anyways. So, yeah, agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's if he can take 30, 30 arrows from me. God, if he <laughs> takes thirty arrows from you, that there's doesn't matter how many shivs I have. <laughs> it doesn't matter how much yeah. we kick him. It's it's over. <laughs> However, <laughs> obviously, you aren't destroying the armor quite yet. No. Okay. We're gonna plan it. Yeah. Because first, we're gonna go get a demon sword. Uh, what are you all getting from your level up? Oh I, yeah, I get a I get a feat or ability score increase. Still trying to figure out mm. what I want. I get a spell, and you're taking anti magic field. Yeah, um, and Pluto. I uh, received my second action surge, Ooh. which I'm super pumped about. I know I, I believe my only restriction is I can't use them on the same turn, mm -hmm. but uh, having an extra action surge is going to be fantastic and. I have this wonderful picture book that I can't wait to dive into. Um, <laughs> next time, maybe think about an audio version, but that's just like a little bit of like a something. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Can I have a servant follow me around and read it to me? Should I just and then he has to show me the pictures. Should I just take Lucky? Hey, sh there's nothing wrong with the- uh... I'm like the last one. It's a little bit of luck. Are you the only player? Like every one of you has at least one character that took Lucky. They you do. took it on both. No, no. Um, you Pluto has Lucky. Yeah, but Wrath. Wilhelm has Lucky. Wrath doesn't need luck. He has Bruce. Okay, take it. Yeah, take it. I think I might take Lucky because I think <laughs> that's the only way we're gonna get through this is a little bit of luck. <laughs> no, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Okay, Lucky it is. Um, so we're doing Lucky. I was gonna wonder if there's like an Eldritch evocation invocation that would be really cool. For Veo, tap into Bruce's power. Devil sight. Is that the yes true sight? That's she the can see magical dark. darkness. That is cool. Who? Me? As an option. As an option. Um, he was, but lucky, lucky. Lucky's but. just so fun. Oh, I mean, I do in future. I mean, I guess I could use it now, but um, at, I get blind sense in in two levels, so I don't know. Yeah. That's in two levels. So. Okay. Yeah. I just don't think I can. And with that, know. old man Knight says, you've spent some time here learning, but you do you may need to procure other things. I cannot tell you whether it is wise or not for you to accept the offer of the whispered promise. All that I can tell you is what I know is that when the Whispered Promise sought to steal the Demon Blade from me, there was, uh, she utilized one of her own warlocks as a vector for that attack. A fire giant warlock known as Ramek Demon Grip. Ramek, in, in the process, however, Ramek was able to regain his own will and defy the Whispered Promise, instead making his pact to the Demon Blade itself. So we are probably gonna have to find Ramek the Fire Giant Hexblade Warlock, mm -hmm. who has sworn a pact to a demonic blade. He wanders Nox. Part of the reason why he is difficult to find is because of my own protections and the nature of the Dungeons of Nox themselves make it difficult to use divination magic to find him. Do you know whereabouts 
He wanders? The, he could be anywhere. Mm. The whispered promise claims to know, and so if you wish to bargain with the whispered promise for that, that is one option. The other option is that I can temporarily suppress some of my protective magic that prevents scrying eyes from seeing into the Dungeons of Nox. If I do this, however, both the Silver Order and the Faith, Faithful and the Directorate will know, and Knights of the Silver Order have long sought St. Tarna's Bane. There are many who wish to take that blade up and so that it could be locked in the vaults of the faith or destroyed. If I lower the wards to pinpoint Ramek's location, it is almost certain that the that Knights of the Silver Order will also learn of this and send their own strike force to take Ramek out and seize the blade as well. They have wanted it for a very long time, and that opportunity will not be something that escapes them. And without those two, I guess there's, other than wandering around, we're not really going to know where to look. Yes, I do not know how long it might take you to find Ramek otherwise. I guess, yeah, that's tough because, I mean, can I, can I even wield this demon blade without making a pact with it? I'm sure you can. I think I have to. I think I have to make a pact with it if I intend to use it. I also need to remember that if I show up to the Silver Order, they're not going to let me just waltz around with a demon blade. I'm going to be enemy. The demon blade is not... You must understand that the demon blade is the very sword that struck down St. Tarna. Yeah, they would... It is perhaps the most abhorrent weapon known to the faith of the Sacred Flame and something that that throughout the life of that faith they have wished to destroy. Yeah. I think... You have to consider <clears throat> after this. I mean, they're mad enough that you hold Ignatius. They consider it a sacred blade, but they might see it as a direct threat from you to them wielding this blade. And I'm not saying Pluto don't do it, but um, it's a clear sign of what side they'll see you choosing. Well, maybe, like, I mean... Were Ignatius also not suppressed by Nox? Ignatius would probably have a lot to say about this, but <laughs> Ignatius' is, it, it will is is still affected by the curse of Nox down here. I love that we haven't heard from him in a while. Yeah, it actually concerns me because I feel like he'd probably caution me against it, but at the same time, yeah, I don't need to hear that right now. You don't need you don't need his caution. I can caution you plenty. Okay, cool. So here it is. Yeah, hit me. We're not going to tell them that you have the demon blade. Got it. So when we go back to the surface, we're going to hide your sword. Hide your sword. And you're gonna give them Ignatius and be like, giving you my sword. We killed it we killed a, a sorcerer king. Here's Ignatius. They're gonna know. Why would they know? They probably you will know. Don't think uh, who's the leader of the Silver Order? I feel Order? like yeah, that some the leader of the Silver Order will know. They'll be able to sense it on him. Yeah, I, f I have a feeling that they're gonna know. If you bring the demon blade out of the Dungeons of Nox, or into a place where the diviners and soothsayers and prophets of the Sacred Flame can perceive it. I kept it hidden away for a long time. Why'd you hide it? It is a potent magical weapon. And I am not one... It is not in my nature to necessarily destroy things which are powerful but dangerous. I believe that there it is possible to understand and in general my path and the choices that I have made and sometimes these have not been the best choices has usually been to sequester and seal. For in my experience when you try to destroy something they tend to find ways of coming back and I believe that this that the Silver Order understands this especially when it comes to powerful magical artifacts like this, they can be destroyed, but they seem to find a way back into the world somehow. 
It is as if whatever forces that propelled them, again, it they don't cease to be. Mm-hmm. And what happens instead when such things are destroyed is that they end up in the hands of the minions of those who would use them for ill. And thus, I have always felt that it is better to keep them in a safe place rather than an unknown. And for the time being, Ramek Demon Grip is powerful, but cares more about his own survival than about necessarily wreaking havoc with the Demon Blade. So in many ways, he has been an adequate custodian of of the of Saint Tarna's bane. For now, no one knows where it is, and no one seems to be worried about using it. But I still know that it is close. Okay, can I throw you my high level pitch? No bad ideas. We get the demon blade. Mm-hmm. We seize it from the custodian. Mm-hmm. We take it from the janitor. We go to the surface, but we do not talk to the Silver Order. We leave immediately. We surrender Ignatius to Lucretia Matthias, and in turn, get her to cleanse the Demon Blade. I don't know why I believe this. I don't know a lot about magic, but I have a feeling that she can uncorrupt that sword. And why would she do that for us when we've very specifically made an enemy of her? Because we give her Ignatius. That's what she wants. Yeah, but I guess Wilhelm's also trying to get the Silver Order to not attack us. I don't know if we completely undid all of that just by being here, but that's definitely an option. Oh no, we made it worse, and we're hoping that uh, Wilhelm can just smooth that out later. So maybe we do have to give the Silver Order Ignatius. We might have to. And and uh, and um, the Shield of Saint Vitruvio. That that might have to happen. We're gonna be in the but biggest timeout. Maybe ever. I gotta give. I gotta Saint Tarna's Bane is a massive blade, just so that you're aware. And so not one-handed. No, it it's the 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 blade is nearly six feet long. So I have to get into a great weapon fighting. <laughs> I have to retrain. Forget how to use a shield. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? We 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 can't. Uh, you know, cart before the horse. We gotta steal the blade first. So we're either we need to lower the defenses and let everybody know where the blade is, no. or you're gonna go talk to a demon. Should we talk? I don't. Do I have to? Or we're gonna wander the halls of Knox until we find him. I mean, yeah, I think, I think uh, we go. Uh, we know how to draw an enemy out. You, you're. We're gonna take none of the options. Like I think they all have consequences. Yeah. The consequence of us not doing any of them is if you think we can draw this enemy out, the Nox is huge. Do we have time? I don't know. Like if you walked into a city and were like, I need to find Bill the housekeeper in a city of thousands of people. I'm gonna use the phone book. It- uh, so maybe we can... What's a phone book? <laughs> We, uh... It might be like walking into Drakenheim in the gates and wanting to call out the... Uh, okay. There's a brain in the castle. I'm down to... Okay, I'm down to talk to the the whispery lady. Just offer her, can... like... Well, it's a location. Your soul. It's a location. Not a soul. No. Souls are precious. It's hard to talk to they you. They may not be precious to you, Sebastian, it's but they so are precious. It's so much harder to talk to you about soul stuff anymore. Just, By the way, do you need to eat a soul? Is that yeah, how hungry yes. is he? Am, Actually, he's getting pretty hungry. I am really hungry. Yeah, and, and that, that would be a factor if you're going to be searching around the Dungeons of Nox. Yeah, this is going to be the time crunch. Yeah, but this what can the... I eat here? Nothing. Can you eat the fire giant? Can I eat the fire giant? Um... Get you a snack, the, buddy. <laughs> you need the, a Snickers. Like, I have not experienced a, an edible soul yet. And the three that I did, they revived themselves before I had a chance to eat the Oh, souls. yeah. That yeah, how long has it been? I've had two long soul. rests. I haven't eaten a soul yet. Had at least three long rests. 
You're getting hungry. Yeah, I Actually, know. Actually, you're getting really hungry. Yes. Yeah. Stop looking at me like that. <laughs> yeah. Just, your face turns into a turkey. In I was, <laughs> what do you desire? <laughs> I was yes. going to eat the souls of those people on the surface, but no, they had to have heal the ones that we fought. The like yeah. other adventuring Oh, they party. healed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they were bad. Bad. They tried to kill us, so I was going to eat their mm. souls. Okay, well, we got to eat. You got to get you a soul to eat. And so... Okay, so I'm going to eat this fire giant soul. So okay, then we got to find him. It's a giant soul, so it probably counts for like two or three souls. <laughs> what if we... It counts for one. We, we, we must... Soul then. is a soul. Okay, uh... All right. Do we talk to the demon or do we yeah. open it up? Do, well, how do they... Are they going to... In fact, Sebastian, I'd say you're hungry enough now that... Um, I'm going to give you a level of exhaustion... And that level of exhaustion isn't going to go away until you feed. And every time you take a long rest between now and then, every long rest you take without feeding, you're going to gain another level of exhaustion. Why didn't you let me eat those souls up on the surface? It wasn't my choice. <laughs> yes, it was. No, I tried to. It was the. You should have tried harder. Ah. Twin Guys, let's go come. back up there and just eat the silver order. <laughs> Guys, let's just. Let's no, just no, do no, it. No. No, it's no, it's no. gonna be fine. We'll no. eat Uriel Radley. He doesn't even need a soul. Okay, question though. How do we know that the Silver Order's trying to scry when we know they can? How do they know? They're I think I I imagine it's like they've mm -hmm. got like the telescope aimed at you us think? and then as soon as the barrier goes down. You think? I think. There are certain Zelbaka says there are certain things in this world that are of interest to extremely powerful people. And within both the Amethyst Academy and within the Faith of the Sacred Flame, it is important for for people of our uh, at this high level of power for us to keep tabs on these powerful things. Mm. And would it be immediate? No. But would it be something that they noticed? Absolutely. And in the time that it takes you to pinpoint that, yes. You might get lucky. We we might, luck may be on our side, but you, given the importance and significance of the blade, and the fact that they know that it is in Knox, mm. right? They they know that it is. Um, you know, for for myself, as I, I even even for myself, I have to keep my location hidden because there are many who would seek to destroy me. Were I were I not constantly in in, in hiding, mm. um, that is simply the nature of individuals at our, our level of power. Is that is, is that power attracts the powerful. There will always be those who there are those in the world, and beyond, who are seeking out the powerful. The knowledge that I possess here, that I am sharing with you now openly, there are scores of individuals on this continent, continents beyond, and worlds beyond that would do such terrible things to access the collection of lore that I have here. And that is why it must stay hidden and safe. Mm. So even a, even a, a the, the dungeons of Nox are not, are a place where those of us aware of the dangers of the world know that things great and terrible are buried here. And there are people who monitor the situation who are just waiting for an opportunity to easily find some of those treasures. Mm. Don't tell your mom. What do you think, Veil? Uh, if we if we reach out to this demon, what can we offer it? What's I don't know. We don't know what it wants. Yeah, and we that, can't offer it souls because I need to eat those. But does it want all those things? Would it want Ignatius just for the information? Because I feel like that's not a fair trade. But I mean, also like... One of the the only other things that you can offer a demon is a service of favor. I don't know a demon of favor. I will. What? I'll do it. I'll owe it a favor. You already owe so many demons so many things, Sebastian. And you're not even delivering on the ones you already owe. Well, when we... you're going into soul debt, like a <laughs> massive soul debt. When we come across a soul, let me know. <laughs> And I'll eat it. Stay away. Okay, actually, good question. Are any of the any of the creatures that we fought so far do they have souls? Well, the, go the golem didn't, 
have have a soul. What about the like shadow things at the beginning? Oh, those would have been good souls. They would have been kind of stale. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Did they have souls? They were like souls. They oh were man. Oh, you forgot. Did I you? didn't forget. I thought undead. I couldn't. Don't do. you hate that when you're just so busy with work that you just you, <laughs> you miss your yeah <laughs> yeah, and then you're like, oh, it's I'm really up. hungry. Okay. And you're like, oh, I forgot. To eat. How do I know what has a soul and what doesn't? You tap in. Oh man. Is it a human? Those weren't human. Well, they were Work. actual ghosts. Like anything okay. that is a spirit or a ghost, you can eat that. And if it if it is if it's a skeleton or zombie, can I? No, a no. skeleton or zombie, no. But um, an intelligent undead, so certain forms of intelligent undead are technically soulless. Not constructs, but beasts. No, you need the soul of a. You need a sapient, mortal soul. Okay, what about like aberrations? Aberrations do not have souls. So. Humanoids. Humanoids and giants, yes. Some undead. So in summary, can, uh, a humanoid, a spirit-based undead, or a giant are readily acceptable under some circumstances. Um, in order to consume a spirit of a actual celestial or demon, you have to do that in the plane of existence that they're from. So if I'm in the abyss, I can eat yes. demon souls. Yes. If I'm, if I'm in, also the way that in the Shadowlands I was able to eat yes. the souls of yes. all creatures there. Yes. Um, right. Um, and then things like elementals, constructs, and plants don't really have souls, and the souls of beasts and monstrosities, um, they're they're just not this, on the same level of sustenance. As, so as that? Even like higher end ones, like if I kill a beholder, I can't eat beholder soul? Not aberration. Aberrations are fundamentally soul soulless. Dragons, on the other hand, sure. Cool. And when it comes to undead, as long as it feels like an undead that has a soul, not something that's just been risen up. Correct. Okay. Cool. Thank you. I yeah. uh, just wanted to be clear on that because I feel like I missed an opportunity for some soul eating mm -hmm. and didn't even realize it. I just, uh, I gotta, I gotta be on top of that, guys. Yeah, yeah, and I'll yeah. try to help you remember. Yeah. Well, thanks. Nudge me. Eat a soul. The, you look hungry. You're hungry. You're hungry. On, on the other hand, Zelvaka does say, you are young in your power. Um, and the, you are young in your power as a lich. And you have not yet developed some of the more powerful abilities that you may one day master as you do consume more souls. I have had my fill and had much time to consider the ramifications of what that means, but it still is what I needed to survive. And Zelvaka and, and Old Man Knight continues, what I found for myself uh, that it did become increasingly difficult for me to continue in this way. But fortunately, some time ago, when I was perhaps less scrupulous than I am now, I had sought to contain a large number of souls for my own consumption. If you wish, I can allow you to partake from my soul well. But I must be conscious of my own reserves. And I am sorry to tell you that I can only allow you to do this once. Okay. I'll hold off for now. If I get more hungry, if you, if I can only do it once. Right now, I'm just like hungry, but I'm not starving. Yes. In um, if I get to like three or four levels of exhaustion, that's probably when I should oh, okay. be chug. Yeah, I should chug be. from the well. In my in ancient days, when I served the sorcerer king, this is vizier. I um. At the time, it was not known as 
as Liberio, but I conjured a great and powerful artifact that destroyed Liberio and drank deep of all the souls of all the people who lived there. And the entire population of that city now lives in my soul well. I cannot tell you when you drink from it what type of soul you will consume, but the experience is extremely unpleasant. Well, when I ate souls, it was actually pretty great, so that sounds unappealing. I recall it was fine at first. But I long for the time when I can have dreams of my own. For now, it is hard to remember who I am. For when you eat a soul, when you consume a soul, its memories, its identity becomes a part of you. Eventually, your dreams cease to be your own. And you find yourself lost in the memories of all those who you have consumed, remembering their hopes, their dreams, their fears, their lusts, their wants, their greeds. Such was it the case for I that I drank deeply of so many innocents that I came to realize the horrors that I had committed. Cool. Good. Um... And that take that as a warning, for I have known others of our kind that resolved to only consume the souls of those they felt were evil and de only deserving. But know that when you consume souls that are filled with malice, that malice lives in you. And those who feed on those who they who are filled with hate and rage and wrongdoing over time that becomes the diet that you consume. You are what you eat. Okay. Um. Food for thought. Literally. Good one. Thanks. Good joke. Thank thanks. Don't worry, guys. I have a plan. <laughs> Thank God. Maybe that's the penance for that life that you get living longer than you should. Nothing is without a cost. Yeah. Well, I'm going to eat a giant soul. Okay, let's go find this guy. And I think the easiest way to find him is to ask for help. I think shutting down your scrying, allowing scrying in would, I think, tip off the directorate to your allyship which I think is a dangerous play. I think you operating as a shadowy helper is much more important. So if you are going to demon. entreat yeah. the Whispered Promise for a ser and offer the Whispered Promise a service, the only advice that I can offer you is to be specific. Hmm. If you offer, the Whispered Promise will jump at the opportunity for an undisclosed favor. But that undisclosed favor will be something terrible, indeed. They will only, they, you must accept a certain degree of ambiguity in whatever service you offer them. But consider this, if you offer a favor to the Whispered Promise, they may ask you to slay someone that you do not want to slay. So consider carefully. At the same time, if you come into them asking for a bunch of conditions on what sort of service or favor that you offer, they won't take it. So you will need to choose something that is open-ended yet specific. What do you think? Well, I've got Let's, an idea. Okay. I have an idea. Okay. What's your idea? Well, we could offer to find them something that they want. I was going to offer them the soul of an academy directorate. Ooh, that's a good one. Why don't you leave with that? That we're gonna kill them. They're powerful souls. Yeah. Um, give us like in exchange for the information, and within a few months we will send you well, a director soul. Weeks. Weeks. All right. If you want to start going after directors right away, let's do it. I mean, once we bring down a sorcerer king, we can do anything. Yeah. You're going to be the one doing the talking, though. Okay. 
Um, but that's that's an offer to put on the table. Think of who our enemies are. I mean, okay, I know you're going to hate this, so we're not going to make eye contact while I say this. We could offer Lucretia Matthias' soul. I mean, I don't hate it. I'm just throwing it out there. As I thought she might be a great person to, to, to cleanse the demon blade. You could make it lesser and offer Nathaniel Flint's soul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that guy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, a righteous soul, you know? Well, well they want a righteous soul, or do they want something... That's what we don't know. So these these are souls? just offers. Think of who our enemies are, and who's who our powerful enemies are, and those are souls that we can put on the table as an offer. Demons okay. love souls. I don't, I don't know. Okay, I guess I uh, I'm gonna find a nice secluded spot. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go somewhere in the mansion. I'm gonna sit down, and reach out to the. <laughs> I'm gonna sit down. You may join us. I think we, we should do yeah. it together. Yeah, let's, let's, um, yeah, let's I, summon demons. And I'm so just... Vaka can offer you a summoning circle. Oh, oh okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, Thanks, buddy. And we're gonna... Um... Hey, hey, let's make a deal. The fires of the circle alight and the strands of hair representing the whispered promise taking upon once again. This time... The form is that of an object of desire. And so in some cases, the whispered promise is actually appearing as the weapons that you've been devising, the answers that you're seeking. Um, and the whispered promise said, I knew you would be back, just not so soon. You... You have things we want and we have things you want. Mm. St. Tarna's Bane. Yes. Very we good. seek the carrier of St. Tarna's Bane. Mm, you wish to know the location of my old friend, Ramek Demon Grip. I can tell you where he is. In fact, I will bestow upon you a token of my favor that will lead you right to him. I just got thought of another idea. Okay. Ramek oh, yeah? used to be your servant, mm -hmm. but you lost your grip on him. What if we enslave him back to you? Um, let me say that I view that as a finder's fee for this. I want something a little more. Than oh, that. oh no! Like if if not, I'm eating his soul. We. I need that. I'm eating it. Our, I'm eating it. Oh. We, we have intentions to go after certain high-level magic users. Mm -hmm. And with the help of the blade, we will accomplish this feat. Um, so we wish to offer you a trade. I'm listening. The location of the one who carries St. Tarna's, uh, what's it, St. Tarna's Bane, um, for the soul of a high level, extremely powerful directorate member. One of the academy directorate. Correct. One of my choosing. Interesting. Um, Zalvaka's off the tape. Well, we, we, the do problem we, is, is do we that. we know that all of them are against us? No. The problem is, is that we just don't know who we're going after first. All or nothing. Take your pick. I haven't decided yet which one I want. Alabaster. I haven't decided yet. If you're not going to give me my pick of the litter, then I'm not interested. What How you... about instead of you picking? We offer you two. If you either, if we're not going to allow you to pick, we pick, but you get twice as many. Interesting. So we will do the choosing 
but because they are not yours to choose, you get double. Provided they're not yours to choose either. Two determined randomly. Oh. We're only going to kill the ones that are... That are, like... Wait. Do you mean out of the... Once we kill them, they're chosen randomly to be sent to you? Or how do we determine... We're not going to kill all of them. We're not killing all of the directors. Oh, you're no fun then. Unless they all... The steel is getting worse and worse all by the minute. Two at random seems... Excessive. Who decides the randomness? How do I know it's not just you choosing to? She holds up a demonically inscribed die. Oh man. But like, Zelvaka can't be on the table. We can't just go back to him after he offered us all of this and be like, sorry, buddy. I don't think he would accept a sorry, buddy. Um, oh, wow, that's interesting. Does, does, hmm. does the um, Sorcerer King have a soul? I would assume so. We Maybe are, not, we also like... plan on slaying for realsies. The Sorcerer King. Is there anything that the Sorcerer King has in their possession that is of your uh, I know this is bad that I'm leaving it open ended, but I don't no, know. No, but you're being it. specific. Is it on the Sorcerer King? And it's something that we can bring to you. Mm. Something to replace your lost artifact the sword that you would be. What sort of assurances will you give me? How do I know that you are even capable of defeating a Sorcerer King? I literally can't die. Hmm. So like, if I get defeated by the Sorcerer King, I'm just gonna come back and keep trying to kill him. I think that if you fail once, you'll keep, perhaps you can try and try again. Very well, then. With different friends. <laughs> you just bring back new people each time. If you confront the Sorcerer King, I wish to have the soul of the first one to die in that battle. Oh. It's definitely going to be me. <laughs> you! Yeah. No, we said our souls are off the table. We don't even have one. Well, you you can't die. You come back, so it's either either one of ours. Yeah. Or the sorcerer I'm king. I'm not okay with that. But if one of us dies, regardless of what the outcome is with the sorcerer king, then we're. Gone. That's you making the deal. We were the ones offering you something that the sorcerer king's holding. And the Sorcerer King has a lovely soul that would certainly be a fine addition to my collection. But I need a little bit of an assurance because you are asking for information from me up front. So I need to know that I'm going to get something out of the deal regardless of whether or not you fail or succeed. Is there any information of equal value that we can provide? Hmm. Maybe you because can hold on to one of our artifacts I until feel we're like, back. So. Well, I just feel like us getting information about a sword isn't necessarily soul worth, worth a soul. <laughs> and yeah, they're already it's getting not a good necessarily. Deal. It's just consider a little a little bit of a bet based on how confident you are in your own skills. I'm sure you will all feel not yourself. very not. <laughs> oh man. The end result would be an uneven bargain. Well, what's the fun in a fair trade? There's always got to be a little bit of an imbalance to a power exchange. Someone always has to be on top, and someone always has to be on the bottom, after all. I, I, um, I'm really great at... No, I'm actually terrible at negotiating. Well, and just remember, we have other options, so we can always just 
lead this negotiation, and yeah. she gets nothing. Yeah, she doesn't really seem interested in. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, it's a shame. I thought, thought, thought there was maybe something we could offer you that you wanted, but we can always take option B and find the sword another way. Very well. No. <laughs> no, our bluff. It's been gold. Gosh darn it. Oh, man. All right. What if... What? I don't know. Don't do it! <laughs> if we fail to obtain the sword... I can't offer you my soul. It is bound to somebody else, but I can offer you my services. Hmm. I would accept an undisclosed favor of my choosing from the three of you at no. a future date. <laughs> if we fail at killing the Sorcerer King and getting what you need after acquiring the blade, you get me, not those two. The three of you drive a very hard bargain. We're offering you a lot. No, you're not. You're offering me scraps. In, my, in exchange... My eternal services is scraps? That's indeed rude. it is. In exchange for the knowledge of one of the most powerful swords the world has ever seen. What's that knowledge to you? Currency. And I'm holding currency. And I would like to extract the value of that currency in exchange for something of value to me. It is no more than a simple deal. Either you won't want to make a deal, and if you're not interested in making a deal, you're wasting my time. I mean, we're trying to make a deal. You're making it difficult. Pluto, back to you. No, you're being cheapskates. I'm not offering you my friend's souls. That's off the table, and I'm not killing the new friend we just made. Friend's souls. Oh, you're no fun. I've... Ugh. I've, I have a bad reputation of putting my friend's souls on the line, and I promised them I would never, ever do it again. And Very well. If practice. you pledge to me a service of my choice at an undisclosed time of my choosing, I will provide a guarantee to you that no element of that service will require that you extract the soul of any individual of any kind. And that is if we fail to bring you what... No, that is that you will give me the favor in exchange for the information. I thought we were talking about there was something from the Sorcerer King that you wanted. I don't care, no. Mm -hmm. I want a favor from you. No. Or something from you. Okay, then we have nothing to talk about. No, 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 wait, what? okay, I'm sorry, I'm getting confused. I thought that we were establishing a deal that she needed insurance for if we failed the Sorcerer King. If you King. fail to kill the Sorcerer King, the three, you two are going to be dead and you will be destroyed and you'll be in no position to try again. Therefore, you have one shot as far as I'm concerned and that's all you get. We were literally told not to give her an undisclosed. Yeah. That's I was like, the, the, the one thing like, we weren't supposed one to do. Thing we, were supposed yeah, to we, give. Were, we were given one I no. mean, do we want to still uh, do the random... Zelvok is so boring. Do we still want to do the random uh, directorate? Members? One. I hate how that many, because we just many? made a friend in the directorate and another one is my mom. Yeah, but it's... Is she? Is she in the directorate? There was an empty seat and it's hers. And she's back now. But she doesn't have a soul? I think that two souls from the directorate of our choosing is very fair. I... The... Like, that's two souls. Like, you're getting two free for for just the information on where a sword is. You don't even have to help us take the sword. You just have to tell us where it is. And we have to do all the work. And you get to eat. We have to fight a giant wielding a magic sword uh, that has killed angels. Then we have to fight a sorcerer king. Then we have to go kill members of the directorate. If you want to talk about an unfair bargain, yeah, I, you get two free souls by sitting here doing nothing but telling us where to go. I am merely a merchant. Yes. 
I am selling you a piece of information. And we are we are having to go through a whole lot to pay for that okay. little piece I of information. I think that you underestimate the value of this information. Yeah. Question, question. Are we ever going to be friends with the uh, Silver Order again? Yes. <laughs> That's literally part of the plan, is we have to make friends with the Silver Order. Because Wilhelm... I don't know, we were saying about Lucretia Matthias again. That's not the Silver Order. Yeah, I know, no, I, it, we were, I was saying, like, maybe I could, like, make buds with her, but you're like, no, and then that, we shut that down. Mm. Queen All of right. Thieves? What do you think? Queen of Thieves? Uh, her soul's off the table. Why? <laughs> it can't be. We have a lot of, like, conditions around soul giving, so... Then don't offer me a soul. We offered you two. Two, I mean... Okay, well, they, there are conditions. I don't it. need a soul if you'll offer me a service. Yeah, the service we offered was we will get something off of the Sorcerer King. Or we just find something she wants. Actually, yeah. I will not ask you to take a soul, and I will not ask you to kill anyone. I, I... How's that? I think that there's something that you do need. And I think that your ability to appear in places is limited. One thing that we have going for us is that we are very multi-traversal. We can go to a lot of places that you can't. So I will offer you one free package delivery. One package, it's not free, you want the information. One package delivery for the whereabouts of the sword. So you will go to a plane of existence. You will go to a place to bring a thing of, that I ask you to do. Yes. To deliver it. To deliver it to your hand, door to door. Mm -hmm. What if I need you to deliver something to someone else for me? Um, as long as you co sign, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. yeah. Are there any other conditions you would like to impose on that? We have to be able to access it. I, I got to be able to carry it. Um, well done. And it, uh, and it can't. It can't be. <laughs> oh, like, no, it's I'm thinking so like it can't be things like the crown. It can't be things like the swords that we want to. A parcel in my possession that you are capable of transporting, delivered to a destination. And, or individual of my choosing. So you already have the thing that you want us to Yes, deliver. it will be an I'm item. I'm sure you of... have lots of things that you have trouble getting out of here. Mm, certainly. An item that is in my possession or that is in my power to provide you with. I, I think it's... I... You will take it, convey it yes. to place, time, or person of my choosing. Yeah, as long as it's also within the realm of like my existence, because I feel like we're on different timelines, so you can't like choose certainly it within like... your mortal life. Thank you. Yeah, and our ability to get it there safely. Mm -hmm. We'll get it and there. back. Yes. Yeah, that's part of our promise. That's our Draken Force guarantee. You will you will deliver it. You will make sure that it is delivered to the place, time, and or person of my choosing. Um, can we have a window of time? Like, can you give us, like, how about we get one week? Is that enough? Just it must be this. delivered within one week of me making the request of you. We have one week? Does that seem fair? Do you think that gives us enough time to... As long as it's not like something demonically silly, like she gives us a package and is like, deliver this to the Eastern Vale, um, and... I mean, you can teleport. Fine. I can teleport to Paradox Castle and then maybe we can get somewhere in a week. Like, I feel like one calendar week. Depends on where like, you need to go. To deliver the like, package. I guess the idea is that you would want us to deliver the package, so why would you give us something that we cannot deliver? I just want to be able to be a vessel Precisely. for you. Why would I? <laughs> something that you... I don't like doing I'm this. sure you have a, a lot of trouble moving packages around, so we're going to help you do that in exchange for the information to retake the sword. So I'll provide you with this information. And then sometime in the future, I may come to you and ask for you to deliver a package to me 
yeah. that you will deliver to a time, place, or location of my choosing within one week of me asking you to deliver it. As long as we can get within that location with it. Yes, it will be within your capability to do But to you have to provide us, yeah. Originally and I will with provide you with the package. Great. And mm -hmm. you mu will must take it within a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Very good. Do we have an accord? We have a deal. Do we have a deal? We have a deal. And it is you specifically that is charged with delivering the package. Or is it all three of you that are required? I shall carry this burden. Very good. I'll go with you, but... I appreciate that. We'll go with you. But, uh, yeah, I will... It will, it will hang on my shoulders. Very good. And I grab the hair. I shake the hair. Looks like a... a you said it was an I'm item, grabbing right? a okay. tail. Uh, in my, what I see is like a roasted cockatrice, like a giant roasted cockatrice. I'm like, is anybody else seeing this? This is weird. You see food. <laughs> of course. Of course. I don't even know what I see at this point. I don't know what object. And you know how to reach me. Yes. I don't know how to reach at you. At any time of my choosing, I may come to you and ask of you to deliver a package for me within one week of Correct. that time. Yeah. It's going to be like the worst timing. I, just I know, know. I know. In the and middle I, of and something. that's going to be so fun to deal with. We're going to be in the middle of something. We're going to be like destroying the, the de delirium hard. And then all of a sudden it's going to be like, you need to get this to like. You have a week. Uh, yeah. Lombario in a week. And you're like, oh, just. You just see. <laughs> see ya. See you guys. You gotta go. Pretty calls. <laughs> Demon duty. Very good. Yeah, great. As you finish shaking the hare's hand, it manifests in the form of a compass Whew. sealed with demonic sigils that points in a direction. Okay. And with the and 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 it shows you a glimpse of Ramic Demon Grip. The compass points in the direction of the giant. Okay. Well, let's get out of here. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm done with. Thank you. Thanks They're for gone. Nothing. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean. Okay, that was my second time making a deal with a demon. And I got to say, <laughs> every time easier. it's like they're here. And then you're like, no, how about here? And then they're like, how about here? And then you're like, no, no. And then eventually you realize that they started here and now you're here. And then they're like, cool. That was my first demon <laughs> deal and yeah. i don't feel great about it it, it went a about bad the same taste in my mouth went about the same the last and time i, I made it. I honestly, eat a lot of things yeah i felt like it was pretty tame but yeah really i just don't know <laughs> when it's gonna that's come the thing up. is technically like our first offer was like but but somehow we ended up at like a time of her choosing I just you're gonna felt just like package have a deliveries better than soul delivery yeah i i agree my i think we did the best better. we could but um so, i'm really i know I knowing wait. demons it's just knowing gonna, Monty. <laughs> Knowing Demon Monty, it's just gonna happen at the worst. I can't Even wait. He gave us some time. I can't wait. That's why I wanted the week, seven calendar days. It's, okay. that's a great time. The Locked. moment, the moment that whenever this happens, the moment it happens, hopefully I'm near I'll you, tell you guys. and you need to be like, I need to get this to this place in a week. If it's a place I can teleport us to, I'm just gonna start collecting. You know what? I take some sand from the ground right here. I put it in my pocket. <laughs> We I'm might gonna, have to go anywhere. I'm going to start collecting vials of sand everywhere I go, just so that we have, like, world-spanning <laughs> sand puns. And I'm going to label it. I'm going to write That's Nox. what the vials are in yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. So um, everywhere we go, collecting some sand. Nox. Okay, if we need to return to Nox, I can teleport here. You know what, though? It's like, what if it's not just necessarily where we're going, but what if it's a certain thing that empowers our enemies? We got to do it. Yeah. Like, it might be like, hey, deliver this magical blade to the Queen of Thieves. And you're like, well, she's right in front of me. Here's a soul murdering sword. There you go. <laughs> Don't stab me. Oh, that's like, a really good idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Like, what if we're in the middle of fighting a director and it's like, can you please give this uh, orb of annihilation to the director you're facing? Like, okay. <laughs> well, I can do it in a week. I could kill them first and then yeah. give it to them. Yeah. Set it on their course. <laughs> there you go. Done. Delivered. <laughs> and
romantic <laughs> papa. <laughs> Okay, good. Yeah, well, there's, we'll we'll try to loophole it. But we're also gonna get loophole. Oh just, yeah, just so, a lot of holes. so bad. A lot of holes. So now that we're indebted to a demon and we have a compass that will lead us to a battle that we might lose. Let's um, go fight a giant. Let's get go. you hungry. You're hungry, big guy. I'm really hungry. It's 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 souring my mood. Uh, I, I'm imagining that we haven't done the level. We haven't done the anti magic preparation. So I still have shield, shield, hex, darkness. Is there anything else we can prepare to fight the um, Hexblade Warlock? Yeah, I just still have four shield. Then we we got ours upgraded though, right? Yeah. So I mean, we can ask Elvaka before we go if he can put some spells into. It's a cool like. Oh yeah. Can you put? Elvaka so offers his commiseration and says, "In my time, I have made countless deals with entities far more terrible." Than the whisper promise. Are they ever fun? Like, do you ever make a deal and you're like, nice, that went well? Or is it always pretty rough? You never know until years later whether it was worth it or not. Has it ever been worth it? Sometimes. Oh. Sometimes it has. Sometimes. I mean, okay. The demon blade could win us. Sometimes all. it's the only way. I don't know what those creatures want. They seem to generally delight in the suffering of mortals. But, and I can say after thousands of years, I'm no closer to understanding their true motives than I ever was. The game that they play is not on the scale of centuries, of even millennia, but far, far longer. And they think of pieces moving long, long down the line. It may turn out that when the Whispered Promise returns to you, I'm old and frail. The thing that you were asked to deliver seems completely innocuous. <laughs> and yet it sets out ripples throughout the future that you do not know. I mean, I prefer that. Yeah, as long as it's a... If they're like, give this rock to that guy over there, and you're like, hey, buddy, here's a rock, and then you never need to worry about it again. And while you might not live to see it, I certainly have lived mm -hmm. to see the ripples of that. For I have seen, and you have seen, how simply bringing one thing that was meant to be in one place to a place that it should not be can cause so much trouble. My drift club. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't meant to come down here. I imagine that it only, then, from all you've seen, it's only worth it if you don't have conscience. Mm. Who is to say? Who is to say indeed? All right, let's go get you a sword. Do we want to put spells in your in oh, yeah. rings? I need, I need, I guess we're up to eight. Is that it? So can we do a haste? Oh, a haste would be good. These are from Zelvaka, though. Can he do that? He can do anything. Because I don't. If we're not yeah. taking a long rest before heading out, I don't yeah, want to yeah. blow a bunch of high level stuff. Just know. You do realize, of course, that if you do not fulfill your end of the bargain, she will take your soul. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's going to be. I know the consequences. So it's all about delivery. Well, and that's why I thought at least we have to be specific on it. it. Has to be doable. It has to be achievable. Yeah. Or else you should just get your soul. Which is a weak soul, uh, as we've all somehow come to oh. fruition. But now you know the location of Ramek. Go forth. Do we? You want we, uh, hastes? Yeah. Can you put some spells in our rings? Yeah. What do you want? Haste. Sure. How many? Haste is second level. Uh, Third level. Third. Third. I'm taking, so we have eight, right? Mm -hmm. I have two shields, counterspell, and I already had two shields and a counterspell. I'll take an extra haste as well. I'll take a haste and a shield. Okay. I'm I'll out take... of third level spell slots, so I can put haste, haste, haste. Can I have cool. a shield? One more shield? Yeah. Same these? Sure. So five shields and a haste. Okay. Hmm. Let's go kill a warlock. With that, you follow 
the compass as it leads you deep through the chambers and the dungeons of Nox. The deal in hand, the compass leads you unerringly past dangers and hazards through hidden passageways. And sometimes it points to a wall where you're like, this is just a wall. And then you realize it's a secret door. And so not only is it leading you through the dungeons of Nox to Remick, it's leading you through the safest and most direct path. As we're doing this, can I make a map? Yeah, if you wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. Smart. I'm going to make a map because it's like taking us and I'd rather just be like, Mm -hmm. how do we get back? How do we do the thing? I know we can teleport, but like Mm -hmm. valuable having a map of Nox. And and, and yeah, it, it, it feels like the the compass itself is almost shrouding you because you pass by creatures and other monsters in Nox who don't even seem to notice you as you pass. Any one of those a shadow? No, you you pass by some sort of creature that appears to be a horrible combination of an elephant, a rhinoceros, and a massive beetle. Make some armor out of that. <laughs> I say we focus on just getting the whole. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, a, a creature of massive description that seemed to be spewing webs out of its elephant trunk. Oh God! <laughs> the old webophant <laughs> of Knox. You've heard a you webophant. Never. E- a webophant needle. I did not. A webophant needle of Knox. The, the needle leads you through one final secret passage into the, pri- the private sanctum Sorry, I was of Ramek Demon Grip. Thank you, As you enter into the passage, you see that um, you see before you a imperious chamber that might have once been a summoning chamber of one of the ancient sorcerer kings. There is a doorway leading into this chamber, but you're actually coming in from a secret entrance through the alcove in the side. There is a grand staircase supporting several bookshelves with ancient and molding tomes. There is an altar piled with skulls before you, and up on the raised section before a great throne is a, is a demonic pool where the massive form of uh, Ramek Demon Grip a plate-armored fire giant wielding the massive blade St. Tarna's Bane, a huge fiery sword of black metal that writhing demonic faces make up the blade's edge. And at certain points, the sides of the blade bristle uh, bristle with a serrated edge. And while we can understand this in kind of modern terms, it's almost like the sword is a chainsaw. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Um, yeah, like it's a massive extended like chainsaw, like chain blade where the rippling edge of the blade, but instead of it being a chain, it is actually like ridges of demonic faces, like waves that are wristling up and down the edge of the blade. That uh, And it actually, the sword itself is screaming and the screaming whale kind of has that ah, ah, like a chainsaw whirring up as the, as the sword screams. You want that sword? I don't know. Yeah, is it louder? <laughs> that seems louder than Ignatius. Yeah. You can see that 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 the um, that th- Ramek is is doing something with the grip of the blade that is revving up the power of oh. of, of the sword. Before him, he has conjured up some sort of um, victim in his in his circle, and just as you enter the chamber, he lowers the blade down, and it just with with screams, it bisects the form of the of the uh, of the minotaur be- before him, and the the minotaur is torn in half, and as it does so, the blade is drawing out the soul of the minotaur into the sword. And then through that, the soul energy goes into Ramek, and he just so breathes it deep. Can because I, can we like, if we get that sword, can you? Because just the power of Saint Tarna's Bane 
is that whenever you slay someone with St. Tarn's Bane, you gain their hit point maximum in temporary hit points. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's, that's awesome. I cast the light aside. <laughs> No, yes, you, don't you don't understand. You don't understand. I'm a package delivery for a demon now, and I need a sword to help me. As, as and some brown shorts. As you do, the other two creatures flanking Ramek de uh, Demon Grip are a massive Baylor and a Garistro. Mm -hmm. And they're just hanging out like. And they're, they're just hanging out like there. There is drinking buddies. <laughs> Um, and the three of you, uh, they're, they're just having a pint of blood. Um, <laughs> couple pints. A couple pints. A couple pints. <laughs> uh, a couple pints of the side of souls. <laughs> Good old soul salsa. <laughs> and and you're list. basically just interrupting game night. Do you eat soul salsa with tortilla chips? Soul with bone chips. Salsa. Bone chips. Yes, yeah, soul salsa and bone chips. Man, can you? You know what? I can't knock it till I try it. You know, <laughs> add it to the list of things I want to eat. You know. You As you it. enter the chamber, the three of you, the three of them say, "Mortals." Oh, they saw a delectable record. snack indeed. Uh, roll for initiative. Oh. We were gonna say the same thing. <laughs> Demons. <laughs> a delectable snack indeed. What we got? Twenty-seven. Fifteen. Uh, seventeen. Okay, guys, remember we're seventeenth level characters now. This isn't this isn't that bad. It might be pretty bad. Okay. Let's see if we can't do this. We can't kill a sorcerer king. That's what we're working our way up to. Yeah. This is the appetizer for the Veo, appetizer. As you begin. Oh. Uh oh. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. My tail gets a bit singed. Ooh. Walls of flame emerge to block the exits. There is no escape from Ramek Demon Grip, mortals. It's your turn, Dale. All right, I am going to... Um, just spread us out a little bit and use my feline agility to get to the other nook on the other side. I can go 60. That's 60. Okay, perfect. And I'm going to go you... focus on the big guy, I guess. Um, <laughs> can you be more specific? <laughs> the main big guy that we're after. <laughs> okay. okay. The screaming sword, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna take three shots. Let's try it. Go for it. Actually, I'm gonna cast Zephyr Strike just to get advantage on. Okay. Good stuff. Good stuff. Bonus action. I get twenty-one to hit. It's a hit. Twelve to hit. Mm-hmm. Uh, twelve is a miss. And then deflects then off his plate. Twenty-three to hit. Both of those hit. Nice. So two hits. So two hits, nice. one with the sneaky sneak. Uh, Forty damage on one. Okay. Yeah. As your first arrow crashes into Ramek, the arrow strikes into him, and in a moment, the you see he looks down, and then the arrow is forced out of his body, the wound closes and the armor closes. Uh, and then you see a small scar of an arrow wound appear on the Baylor and the Garistro. I mean, if, I guess if we do damage to one, it does damage to the other. They share. They share. Do they that. share it or just he just gets the scar? Um, so we saw a scar appear on one or both? Give me a perception check. Oh, okay. Uh, 24. From what you can tell, there is some sort of binding force that Ramek has bound these demons to his service. Mm -hmm. And as part of that, any damage that he suffers is transferred to his demonic servants instead. Okay. Okay. Well, at least that makes it easy. We're killing one hit pool. 
Yeah. If we attack him, we attack them. If we attack them, we attack them. So the demons have to die first. Yeah, so I, I guess I hit him anyway. So whether I hit him with the damage or redirect it to one of them, it doesn't matter. You're still doing the damage. I guess. Can I? The, the damage that is dealt to him is then split across the other two demons. Split, okay. Then can I, the second hit, can I use that on the one? On which? On the one that, I guess it doesn't matter. I just picked one of them. Yeah, uh, go with your gut. The, the, the further guy. Horn? The Garistro? Yeah. Yep, okay. okay. So then that was a, woo! Uh, 33 damage. On nice. Him. And hmm. yeah, I'm concentrating on that. That's that. Okay. Well, Ramek is next. Um, seeing you um, in uh, in those circumstances, um, Ramek uh, reaches out at you, Veo, uh -oh. and he says, "Come." Die! Oh no. And he points at Juveo and casts a spell. Counter spell. At what level? Oh. Don't love it when that's asked. Um uh I'm just gonna cast it at at, at third level. Okay. Okay. It's like... I don't know what, what's yeah, being yeah. cast. Yeah. I have no idea. I don't want to upcast it if I don't have to upcast. Do it? Can I? Can I get a like? Do I? Do I have any indication? Give me an arcana check. He's casting vortex warp, so it works. Cool. He's going to vortex warp Veo right in front of him. Yeah, that's. I. I was kind of guessing. Got, got it. I, I, I kind of was guessing. Okay. But yeah, yeah. Cool. Cool. Oh, cool. You never know when people point their fingers at me and they say die. I'm like that could be anything. Could be anything. Even yeah. the power. So down. as as you reach out and Veo starts to, I I, like, <sighs> I pull out my staff and I just like you see the magic absorb into my staff. Cool. All right. Instead, what then happens is Saint Tarna's bane shakes and shudders. And Saint Tarna's Bane casts haste on Ramek. And Saint Tarna's Bane is now concentrating on the spell so that Ramek doesn't have to. Since Ramek has been hasted, he now has movement and an action, so he says, Very well then. And he rushes towards Vale. <clears throat> uh, and he makes two attacks with Saint Tarna's Bane. No! Uh, getting a 27 to hit and a uh, 25 to hit. Yes, both hit. Okay. Uh, so that is going to be... Shields don't do nothing in that <laughs> spot. <laughs> oh, yeah. I should just check to see if either of those... Oh, actually, it's a crit because when he has temporary hit points from, uh, from the weapon, oh. he has advantage on all attack rolls, saving throws, and ability checks. We should destroy that blade. I don't know if that should go to anyone. I um, mean, your hand's pretty cool. I might die from this. Okay, Damn. so the the crit, um, so it's it's twenty damage. Oh wait. Uh, um, can I silvery barbs? Uh, yes, you can. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're gonna you want a silvery barbs to undo the crit? Yeah. Okay, so it's not a crit anymore. That's important. So then it's it just ends up being a total of, uh -oh. uh, from the two hits then, 62 damage. Okay. Oh, okay. God. That's Who do you give advantage to? <laughs> yeah, Pluto. Okay. Yeah. I was as the, myself. As, <laughs> as Saint Tarna's or blade yeah. crashes down upon you. <laughs> No. The souls screaming within. Pluto, it's your turn. Don't touch my cat. <laughs> I mean, she's not mine in terms of ownership. She's just my best friend. <laughs> and I run at him, and uh, I'm coming for. So I, I run at him to attack from behind. Mm -hmm. Is Ignatius's power still dwindled by the darkness? Yes. Okay. So. I'm going to make my first attack with advantage. Uh, <laughs> 
don't look. Uh, I'm gonna... Lucky. <laughs> Remember, you guys did take a full rest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Does a, an 18 hit. It's exactly what you needed. Woo! He's in plate armor. And that was my... Th I, I don't even want to talk about what I rolled with Lucky. Um, but uh, I want him to make a strength saving throw. I guess 22. Okay. Um, he's going to take 30 damage. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try to hit him again. The damage is transferred to his minions. Uh, a 23 to hit. And another strength saving throw. Okay. Uh, get a 21. And How much damage from the hit? Uh, 6, 9, 12. Uh, 22 damage. 22 damage, okay. And then Transfer to the minions. A third hit. Uh, yeah, plenty. Strength saving throw. Uh, 28. Or sorry, 26. Um, and then another 25 damage. Okay, transferred to the minions. So it's pretty big for minions. Start hitting them, hitting them, hitting them, hitting them, hitting them. Okay, um, lots of damage on the board, though. And I'm going to... Yeah. That's my... All right, next we go to Sebastian. And my bonus action was activating Ignatius, even in his dwindled state. Oh, boy, so many options. What's the best one? Okay, okay. I'm going to twin haste on my two allies. So... Pulling out my staff, your Ooh. own shadows wrap around you and give you the speed of shadow. Um, and I'm going to cast haste twinned on the two of you. And then I'm going to bonus action. I so as I'm as I'm pulling their shadows up around them, I pull my hand over to the side, a portal opens, and out from the abyss jumps Reaper. And starts uh, nibbling, nibbling on some ankles. I don't know why, but I imagine he sounds like like Blue's Clues. I have no idea what Blue's Clues sounds like. <laughs> okay. Oh. 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 Reaper. <laughs> and Reaper's uh, Reaper's gonna take a bite. Okay. Probably won't do much, but he's gonna get a ten to hit. Not nearly enough. I'm uh, afraid. Uh, that's fine. No. He's mostly there to help. Anything else, out. Sebastian? Uh, I'm going to just step backwards a little bit. My friends are hasted, and I'm going to do my best to just maintain that. Okay. Next up, we have the. Alrighty, we got the Baylor. Baylor teleports over here. Hey. Um, and, well, reaching up on his wings and flying down with, with a crash. Takes the fiery whip at Sebastian, which wraps around his leg, uh, getting a 30 to hit. Oh, that's insane. Uh, yeah. For 15 slashing damage and 10 fire, and I need a strength saving throw. 15 damage, 10 fire, and a strength saving throw. How about a six? Okay. The whip lashes around your leg and the Baylor pulls it back, pulling you into the air and sending you flying over this way. You're flying through the air. Meanwhile, the Baylor brings his lightning sword down on Pluto. Hey. Uh, getting a 20 to hit. That does hit. For 21 slashing damage plus 13 lightning damage. Do I have to make a concentration check at all? You do. For the damage dealt. Actually, I'm going to use shield. I was going to say use shield. I'm going to do 18. You succeed. Okay. As you're flying through the air, Sebastian, you're flying through the air from propelled from the whip as you realize that the Garistro is dragging his hooves and lining up to basically jump up oh, and no. headbutt you as you're in the middle of the air in, in a full-on, like, basically you got served up and, oh. and, and he's going to bat you away. So, uh, I'm going to give him advantage on the attack with his gore attack. Getting a critical hit. 
No, I've used my reaction. <laughs> yeah, I've already used my... Re no, wait, my turn came up, so I have my reaction again. Oh, yeah. But I can't... I mean, that doesn't help. It's a critical hit. Okay. You take 150 points of damage. You don't have silver bars? No. <laughs> you are sent flying through the air, and you land prone <laughs> over there. <laughs> okay, so first, we gotta make... What do you... What do we have? What do we have in our tank? You can source your... Oh, right, I can make a roll. No, I can't. Yeah. That's 150 damage. I can't strength of the grave that. No. Doesn't bring you back to one hit. I have to make a charisma saving throw with like five plus the damage taken. Oh. Oh, no. So no. if I can roll 155 on the die. <laughs> That's a really... Do you, do you want me to try? Yes. I failed. Oh! No. What did you get? 31. Yeah, 30, I do got a 30, yeah, I got a 31. Yeah. Okay. Hey. So haste goes down and Veo and Paluto are stunned. We're stunned? Yep. Oh. <laughs> Turns out we can't kill a Sorcerer King. Oh man. Okay. Uh, yeah, when the spell ends, the target can't move or take actions after its next turn as a wave of lethargy sweeps over it. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Uh, I, how did that happen? You don't have any... Hold on, just take a second. Take a beat. You don't have any other way to defer that damage to... It was over a 30 to hit, so I can't shield. Um, it was a crit. It was, it was a crit. crit. But you can't... Because you, you don't have lucky. I don't have lucky. Um, don't know silver, silvery barbs. Don't know silvery barbs. Uh, it wasn't a spell, so I can't Where count a spell. <laughs> and you, you don't have anything reaction-wise. I mean, I have sentinel, but that all that would do is give me a free hit on this guy. But he attacked me. Yeah, I already used silvery barbs, so I can't. Okay. Okay. Oh, I totally could have hacked. Okay. Yeah. I'm getting dodged! <laughs> Not looking great. No. Okay. Well, as the wave of attacks uh, come in to play, um, cool, here we go. Uh, so I basically got a free round of attacks against all of you. Fortunately, you can't take actions, but you... Uh, can't, and you can't move on your turns. Uh, so, yeah, so Ramek is just gonna uh, attack each of you once. Okay. Um, getting a uh, 20 and a 21. Uh, I still shield up, so okay. it misses. All right. It hits me. Hits you, it's gonna be another 31 damage. Okay. The Baylor will attack Paluto twice oh. with both the longsword and the whip. Yep. Uh, getting a 27 uh, uh, hits. and uh, an, a 17. That's a miss. So the sword is going to do another 34 damage total. Ow. Uh, and the Griso will charge down the stairs and try to gore Paluto into the... Uh, firewall? Into the firewall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a play. <coughs> that's the old... Uh, getting a natural one. I needed that. So he misses completely. <laughs> so does he go past me? Uh, yeah, we'll say that he runs past you into the uh, pa past you into the firewall. But <laughs> then he does turn around and he kicks you in the head for oh. another natural one. Woo! Uh, and then he tries to backhand you. Wow, that was a one, one, and a two. The dice are with us. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, because the full turn has now passed. I do need a death saving throw from Sebastian. Okay, Sebastian, this is your moment. I fail. Okay. Veo, it is now your turn. Okay. Um, I'm going to misty step to Sebastian. <gasps> okay. And shove a superior healing potion. In his uh in his body? In your body. That's uh forty? 40. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry that I wasted everybody's no, no. time with my first turn. No, you didn't. 
Yeah. I, I, I successfully stunned both of you. <laughs> is what I did. And you got gored. 150 you damage you on the crit. Yep. Disgusting. I wonder who needs to die first. My guess is the... I mean, as long as we don't let him run at us, it's fine. I keep forgetting I can't dodge. I need to take less damage. Okay. Um... That was also a cool moment. Like, you just got flat, like, poof. I suppose <laughs> yeah, it was cool. Really funny. And then Monty throwing your miniature. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> I don't want to die again, guys. You never die. It's fine. Alrighty. You're Anything? not the one that's going to die here. No, but if I die, I'll leave you two. Um, if sorry. I die, it's probably from that blade, and then he gets to eat my hit points. I'm, better, my, I'm like, I'm better than this. That's my action, and that's my bonus action, so... Unless I want to take some opportunity attacks, I'm going to stay where I am. Alrighty. Pluto, it's your turn. Uh, I'm going to attack... Um, I'm going to attack the gore thing. The Garistro? The Garistro. Yeah. So I'm going to first attack the Garistro for a 25. That's a hit. Um, for... Uh, ooh, nice. Uh... What? 23 damage. Okay. And I want him to... Um, I'm going to do... I want him to make a wisdom, wisdom saving throw. I get a 16. He fails. He is goaded. He is disadvantaged on all attacks against anyone else except for okay. Pluto. Okay. It's like, a, come get me, Minotaur boy. All right. Your horns are small, like... I have a bigger horn than you, and then I, uh, I'm gonna run out through him mm -hmm. to Sebastian, and I'm going to use. Uh, now, will you take the opportunity attack from? Oh, I, I can attack him once. I can attack him once for a 22 to hit. It does hit. Uh, it does does hit. So I'm gonna attack him. Yeah, just to be safe. Ceramic. Second, second. Yeah. Uh, Ceramic is how much damage? 18 damage. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to switch spots with Sebastian. I run basically up to Sebastian, and then we're going to go boop. Okay. And you now have a, uh, aw, a bonus of three to your AC. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to attack... Uh, Hoof the, boy again? The, the, the Greastro again? I'm going to attack the, mini the, the whip dude. Okay, the Baylor. Yeah. And I go, come get some. And I get a, like a 32 to hit. Nice. For 19 damage. Okay. So I'm just like, whack, 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 and just hitting everyone um, and and taunting them recklessly. All right. Well, with that, Ramek is going to respond. Um, and he... Um, he is still hasted by the sword, and he doesn't have to concentrate on it because the sword sword does. So he is going to uh, start um, by, um, I think what he he will do though is be like, "You will not get away from me so easily," and he's going to try to vortex warp you, oh. Pluto, back to him. Okay. You I counter spell. Okay. Uh, from my ring. Okay, so you, you shunt it. Yeah, if this guy's going to play hardball, I'm playing hardball. We're both playing hardball. Okay, in that case, um, given the, 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 the reach and everything, he will simply turn and Eldritch Blast. <gasps> Me? Yeah. Okay. I does four shots. Yep. Uh, the high, I, get a, I get a 19 and a 20. Um... I'm going to... Uh, which are the highest? Uh, the 20 hits. The 20 hits? Okay, it'll be 20 force damage. Oh, that makes me want to shield. Yeah. Okay, if you want to. Yeah. I'm going to shield. shield again. Sebastian, it is your turn. Okay. Um, I, I'm sorry, yeah. Shield. I am going to... That hurts. I'm going to quicken... A spell. Okay. And that spell is going to be Sunbeam. 
and I'm going to blast it right from here through both of these guys. Uh, he has disadvantage on his saving throw, or yeah, because of um, my pop. Uh, so that's going to be a constitution saving throw, DC 20. Uh, okay, he fails his save. And what about this guy? Uh, the other dude uh, also fails. Wow. Can I borrow two D8s? One. Uh, that'll be 27 damage on, well, you know, both of them. Okay, in so theory. great. Alrighty. Moving right along. Well, that was my bonus action. Okay. And then I'm going to use my action to do it again. Okay. Uh, I get a fail on, on, uh, nice. on, wow, both of them. Okay. Six on the die and five on the die with a disadvantage. I'm going to use another sorcery point to empower that to re-roll uh, three of those dice. Mostly better. 30 damage. 30 damage. Okay, so... <laughs> the damage is a little bit all over the place, but I feel like it's all pooled into the same well, right? I'm not sure which one we've damaged more, but I know damaging him damages the other two. So the if I damage other him... two are both bloodied. Okay. Okay. Um, Let's keep going. Great yeah. work. This is actually the best for us because we are really bad at focus fire. So this actually helps. Thank you, Gornak. Or what's his name? Ramek. Ramek. Okay. <laughs> we go to the- You're the wrong That's name. That's how I insult him. Okay. We go to the Baylor, uh, who's uh, gonna uh, try to line up the exact same thing that he just did to, uh, to Sebastian again. Going for the whip. Uh, getting a 20. No. Misses. He has 24 AC until my turn. Oh, I thought you were gonna shield. I was like, you can't shield because you just counterspelled. But but your reaction is actually back. Okay, so he misses with the shield. Uh, I didn't shield. That's just my. Yeah, AC. he misses with the whip. Yeah, yeah. So he'll sword Paluto. Ow! Wow. You guys are luck. I, I know. These dice rolls. <laughs> I know. Um, I'm really thankful right now. They dice. Your your ones and twos have got us back in the game. These dice yeah. knew it wasn't our time. <laughs> I was you guys just know that I I don't fudge dice rolls, so. He doesn't. No. Um, okay. So uh, I think what we're gonna do here then is the Garistro. My life they, is flashing. So the, 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 the Garistro has disadvantage on attack rolls against everyone other than Pluto. Correct. Yep. So, I, I I taunted him. I'm more my cape is billowing behind me. And yeah, so it's, and he, <laughs> it's like right in my face. A he's kind of like <laughs> it's kind of a tra traffic jam of huge creatures right now. So he's going to have to like try to step over Veo, kicking Veo with his hoof in the process, but with disadvantage, uh, which I get a 15 and a 16. Nope. So no, no, on the dice. Oh. So that is a 28 to hit. Yes. <laughs> it's 23 bludgeoning damage. Okay. 23 bludgeoning, and I need a strength save. Uh, can I uncanny dodge it finally? <laughs> yep. Yeah. I is do that, still need a strength save. Is that the reaction I want to use? Yes. Yep. Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, strength. 15. You are knocked prone. Oh, good. Uh, so he's just going to step on you again now oh, that the God. disadvantage is, is disabled uh, for a 24 to hit. The shield still doesn't do it. No, no, I used my reaction. Uh, no. 23 more damage. Okay, so what was half of the first one? Uh, so it would have been 34 total. Oh my god. <laughs> is she down? No, she's on one hit. I'm, <laughs> she's not you down. You stepped on Baylor. Baylor. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then he's just going to punch Pluto. My dinner comes up. <laughs> uh, getting a crit against Pluto with no. his fist. Roll, Wait. roll your Roll your d20. Let's see if it crits or if it if it hits my fingers. You have to roll it. Oh, I have to roll one. it? On oh, a one no. is a real crit. <laughs> oh god, no, it's not a one. Okay, so it's 20 bludgeoning damage. You punches me in the head. Ow. <laughs> Guys, I'm stressed, and this isn't even the Sorcerer King. I'm so stressed out. And I used all my healing on you. <laughs> we need way more healing potions. We need a contingency Alrighty. plan for when you get gored. <laughs> I'm so, I'm I'm so weak. One hit at the top of the round. To be fair, that would have killed me. You hear 
The old man knight whispered to the three of you, this is not going well. <laughs> I think it's going all right. The three of you once again have rushed in without a plan. Yeah, hey, you said to not do that against the sorcerer king. This was different. This is felt it for like everyone now. Is it for everyone? For we were all? fighting a giant. We've killed. I've killed like eight giants in a row. Perhaps you wish to learn a lesson, and if you wish, I will whisk you away from this place, so that you may think on the mistakes that you have made again. But I can only do this for you once. As I'm throwing up. <laughs> Whose turn is it next? Veo's, then Ramex, then Paluto's, then Sebastian's. I... Go away on what you guys think. Can we do a contingency with like, if one of us goes down, he pulls us out? It's, he's like, the. I have the opportunity to do so now. If you wish to do so now, I, I will extend my power and pull you back to my sanctum. But this is your only, uh, but I must be now. Then we fail. You will have another opportunity to, to attack Ramek again. You still have the compass. You, it, you should understand that if you are struck by that blade, there is no coming back from it. Yeah. It kills you if it brings you to zero hit points. It dismembers you. All right. Take us away, Ramek. Or take us away, Old Man Knight. <laughs> you are whisked back to the Sanctum, and that is where we land for the night. Yes. <laughs> well, that was bad. And now we got to sulk in our failure. <laughs> that was bad. Own it. It, We're supposed it to, that was us getting some gear <laughs> to fight a harder challenge. We did, just didn't use any of the things we had talked about. Well, we're not going to use the same tactics against that that we are against the Sorcerer King. Um, you don't hold the most dangerous sword in human history for no reason. Yeah. Yeah, we, we I, I, I probably have to, in this moment, definitely agree with Old Man Knight. We we kind of rushed in. Mm. We just walked in and started doing the old game plan. It didn't work out. I feel partially responsible. I, I, mean, I, I, don't spent, you, I don't think you did anything wrong. I spent a solid six seconds <laughs> ruining everything for us. Old Man Knight says, you must consider the ways in which your own magic creates vulnerabilities. Your strategy of the spell that you used, hasting your allies, is a wonderful combination, but you must recognize yourself in th as the weak link in that. Notice how in that moment, how close you came to defeat. Was there another spell that you could have used that turned the odds in your favor? Had it been me, I would not have even cast such a spell as haste. You have in your staff of power spells of wall of force. You certainly have knowledge of spells such as banishment in your favor. Those were demons. Why did you not banish them? They were certainly within your power to do. I have never learned banishment. And do you think to take on sorcerer kings and sorcerer kings and academy directors without the knowledge of how to banish the extra planar creatures that they would summon i got expelled from school at a very <laughs> like i i made it through evocation class and then through my time in the shadowlands learned some necromancy i've also learned how to move things Ah, uh, banishment that would actually come in handy i didn't pay attention in that class at, like what even school of magic is banishment Abjuration. Yeah, who pays attention in abjuration? Protection class? magic? I, I learned know. shield. That's an abjuration. You hold spell. a staff of power. You had a wall of force within that. You could have used that to trap that Garistro. It would have had no way of escaping it. I have cast wall of force once, and it was <laughs> awesome. And he chokes, and he never wants to top it. <laughs> Thank you, Old Man Knight. Uh, I have to say that... Uh, I'm you really, have much to learn. I have, I'm happy that my soul isn't in a sword right now. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. I would have been close. I just got schooled. 
Going back to school. Maybe that's what Knox is. School for... Indeed. Perhaps it is time that you reflect on some of your previous victories and think about what went best about those and perhaps when things went horribly wrong. Yeah. But we're going to be taking a break yeah. from our regular broadcast to go to Paluto Jackson's Monster Hunt in celebration of our new Monsters of Drakenheim Kickstarter. And so, a thank you to Jill, Kelly, and Joe for playing Sebastian, Veo, and Paluto. But we're going to be back... Uh, uh, very soon with Pluto joined by two other companions in his adventures before Drakenheim, which I'm sure will have lots of, uh, which will be very consistent with the events uh, of the rest of the show. And super accurate. And yeah, canon. yeah. Absolutely canon, right out of Pluto's <laughs> mouth. Yeah, everything I say is totally above board. Nothing falsified, embellished. Yeah, the stories are this big. For you. And a huge thank you to Kyle uh, for sitting through that shame. And telling us to keep fighting. <laughs> yeah. Um, and thanks, Monty, our dungeon master. I, uh, I'm stressed out. You stress. You, you, you got me. You got me. I don't, I'm, I need to learn how to play D&D. If any you watch the videos. Any, um, any by, tips uh, on how to play a sorcerer, um, I'm open. I'm open to suggestions. I mean, and and what wonderful uh, assets produced by talented artists. They've graciously given us permission to use them in our tabletop games, and we encourage you to go out and support some of these amazing creators, the wonderful miniatures by Hero Forge and WizKids, the Dwarven Forge terrain. Uh, these guys are also... All WizKids. Yeah. All WizKids, yeah. amazing um, and terrifying. Yeah. Um, uh, we have player character artwork by Elizabeth Perot, music by Tabletop Audio, and my wonderful helmet. Um, uh made by a geek in the making. Uh, check them out on Instagram. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dude shirts, including Yes, Yes, Yes. Take a look at bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got plenty more great content here. Make sure to jump on our Patreon and our Discord and teach me how to play a sorcerer and defeat all of the enemies that we have to face because I'm getting scared. I'm getting scared. <laughs> so. As you should be. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time in Draconine.